Hi there, thank you for checking out my channel. I'm Sir Sandro. And this video, I'm going to discuss with you one of the most important topics in algebra, the loss of exponents. You know what? I have been teaching algebra for more than two years now. And I have observed that students have a hard time dealing with polynomials, rational algebraic expressions, because you know what? You know what's the reason? They didn't master the loss of exponent. So let us start our discussion to brace ourselves with the necessary knowledge and skills in this particular topic. By the end of this video, you are expected to become adept with the loss of exponents and utilize the same skills to simplify expressions using the loss of exponents and simplify expressions involving parentheses and exponents. But in this video, we're just gonna focus on the product rule the power of the power rule and the power of the product rule. So let us start our discussion with exponents. Let us first define exponent through this given. So say we have two raised to three. We have this as exponent. And we have two as r base. Very good. This is our base, the two, and then three is our exponent. If we are going to expand this, this will just equal to two times two times two. So if you were to give the definition of exponent, what would that be? Exponent. Let's define it. Exponent is the number is the number of times we use the base as a factor again exponent is the number of times we use the base as a factor. So in this case, the base is two. So one, two, three. And the number of times that we use the base as a factor is what we call exponent. All right, don't be confused with that. Now we are going to identify the base and the exponent of each expression. First, we have five to the fourths. What do you think is the base? That is five. And how about the exponent? The exponent is four. Very good. How about in the second expression, negative five to the fourth power? What's the base? Is it five or negative five? That is five. Still, the base is five. The negative here, we can rewrite this as negative one times five to the fourth power, okay? The base there is five, not negative. Let's continue. The exponent is four. Now, take note in the third expression. Our base here is negative five, okay? Is negative five because it is enclosed by parentheses. And everything, is being raised to four. So that includes the negative here because it's enclosed by parentheses. And the exponent is four. So this is one source of misconception for other students. They would just say that this one and this one are the same. But in this case, our base is just five. And in this case, our base is negative five. I hope that's clear. That's why parentheses, the presence of parentheses or grouping symbols are very important. So you have to take note on that as well. All right, let's have an exercise. You are going to evaluate, evaluate, and identify, identify the base and exponent. Okay, 
you are going to identify the, ba the base and exponent. So in this case, what will happen if we have the quantity of negative 3 to the fourth power? Okay, first, let's identify the base. Our base here is negative 3. Our exponent, our exponent is equal to 4. So based in, on our definition of exponent, we are going to multiply this negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Right? We're going to use our base four times as factors of our expanded form. So we have negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. That is equal to what? In this case, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So 9 times 9 is just equal to 81. Right? Do we have any question with this item? None. Let's proceed to the second one before we officially start our loss of exponent. Letter B, what if we have negative 3, the fourth power? About that. Our base, again, our base is, what's our base? 3 or negative 3? We have 3, okay? 3 is our base, and our exponent of, is, of course, 4. Exponent is 4. So let's try to, to expand that. We have this negative. We can write that as negative 1. Times 3, times 3, times 3, times 3. So 4 times. Okay, We use the base as a factor. And then this negative 1. We know that this is negative 1 and this is 81. So negative 1 times 81, this is negative 81. So see? See the difference between example A and example B? Ayan. So the mere presence of parentheses, it, ch it changes. It changes everything. All right. I hope that you were able to review. No, you were able to review your exponent, your base, and on how to... Uh, uh, simplify our expressions involving exponents. All right, let's start with this one. If I have here x squared times x cubed is equal to x, the fifth power. I want you to observe. If I have here x to the fifth power times x to the seventh power, that is equal to x to the twelfth power. Okay? How about if I have 3y squared times negative 2? y to the fifth power that is equal to negative 6, y to the seventh power. Based on the three examples, random examples that I have just thought, what do you think? What patterns or pattern do you see or observe? If you observe here, we have x and x. Same. We have x and x. Same. So the x is being copied here. The x is being copied here. And what did you observe with the 5? It's just the sum of the exponents. We have 2 plus 3 equals 5. Same here as well. They just copied the x. 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. In the third example, we have 3 times negative 2. That's negative 6. But y was just copied here. And then 2 plus 5 were added together. That's equal to 7. 
let's generalize this as our property number one. Property number one. Do you have any idea what's the name of this rule? We have, it starts with letter P. Property number one, that is the product rule. Okay? This is the product rule. If you can observe, okay, with the given examples, the product of two expressions, the product of two expressions, in this case, for example, we have x squared and x cubed. If we multiply them together, is equal to x to the fifth. x to the fifth times x to the seventh is equal to x to the 12th power. So the product of these two expressions with the same base, okay, with the same base, can be simplified by adding the exponents. That is, when multiplying two quantities with the same base, add the exponents and retain the common base as is. So mathematically, we can generalize that as uh, a raised to m times a raised to n is just equal to, they have the same base, a raised to m plus n. And of course, we have to restrict that where a is not equal to zero. Okay, so let's uh, put a box there because this is one of the most important properties of the loss of exponents. The product rule. Again, when we are multiplying two expressions with the same base with the same base we just copy the base and add the exponents let's have another example applying the product rule we have number one again 3x squared times 2x cubed yeah 3x squared times 2x cubed that is equal to okay this one, 3 and 2, anong tawagan sa ila? What are these? 3 and 2. These are numerical coefficients. So these numerical coefficients should be multiplied lang. No? They should be multiplied uh, together. So we have 3 times 2. Okay, Don't worry about them. Just multiply 3 times 2. That's it. And let's deal with the exponents na and the base. Right, the bases and exponents. So they have the same base, which is x. So let's have, let's write it here. We have x, just copy that, and add the exponents, which are 2 and 3. 2 plus 3. And then just simplify. 3 times 2 is 6. x, 2 plus 3, 5. So the final answer is, 6x to the fifth power. Okay, let's proceed to example number two, applying this property. Okay, number two, of course, more complicated examples. 4b cubed c squared times negative 2bc to the fourth times 5b to the fourth. C. All right. Take your time. I want you to get a piece of paper or a, a scratch paper. Get your pen because this is how we should learn math through practice. 4B cubed C squared times negative 2BC to the fourth times 5B to the fourth C. Okay. The first thing that we're going to do is just multiply all the um, numerical coefficients. So we have here the 4, 4 times negative 2 times 5. So these are the numerical coefficients. We have 4, negative 2, and 5. Okay? 4 times negative 2 times 5. And let's check our variables. Now our variables we have uh, in this case, we have B, B, and another B. And we have here the C, 
C and C. All right. Let's start with B first. Since we are just multiplying B times B times B, so let's have, let's write it here the B, B. The exponent of this is 3. So that's 3. The exponent of this is not 0, huh? but there is a default uh, exponent for B, which is 1. So 3 plus 1. And for the last B, which is which has 4 as its exponent, so we add 4. Can you follow? I just added all, I just copied the base, which is B, and then added all the exponents of B here. So 3 plus 1 plus 4. Next, for C, we have C, 2 to the second power, plus 4, plus 1. Again, there is a default uh, exponent there, which is 1. We have 2 plus 4 plus 1. And then just simplify. This is equal to 4 times negative 2, negative 8 times 5. That is negative 8 times 5, negative 40. B, 3 plus 1, 4 plus 4, 8. C, 2 plus 4, 6 plus 1, 7. So the final answer is negative 40, B to the 8, C to the 7. Okay, so that's just how the product rule work in our examples, 1 and 2. Do you have any question for this one? All right, let's go to the third example. Third example, number three. We have 2x plus 1 quantity cube times 2x plus 1. How about this? Oh, sir, that's very scary. Very intimidating example. Hey, just, just apply the product rule. Quantity of 2x plus 1 cubed times 2x plus 1. So in this case, we can just let this, let 2x plus 1 be m, right? We can let that, let us represent 2x plus 1 as m. See? So m, m cubed, and then m to the first power, it's just the same. So we have m cubed times m to the first, that is just equal to m, 3 plus 1, 3 plus 1, that is equal to m to the fourth. But we know that m is just 2x plus 1, right? Kigin let natin ang m as 2x plus 1. So just substitute the 2x plus 1. So 2x plus 1 quantity, the quantity of 2x plus 1, raised to 4. Okay, that's the final answer. 2x plus 1 to the 4th power. Any question? All right, let's proceed to the second example or to the second rule, rather, the property number 2. We're done with the product rule. Property number 2. Property number 2. Our property number two class is kind of similar to property number one, but this is what we call the power, power of a power rule, okay? Power of a power rule. Now we are going to use what we know about property number one, okay? Property number one. So power of a power rule. Let's investigate first before we... We write its uh, algebraic uh, form of this property. Let's investigate first. Given, for example, if you have one, example number one, we have two cube. Okay, the quantity of two cube raised to two. Now let's just apply. Apply first our property number one, which is the product rule. We know that this is just the same as 2 cube times 2 cube. Yeah, 2 cube times 2 cube. 
because again, this is like our base. This is our base, two cube, two cube, and we have the exponent, which is two. So we use the base two times. So two cube times two cube. And we know how to, how to uh, solve this. This is just equal to just copy the base, which is two, and then add the exponents. So three plus three, and that is equal to two, three plus three, six. Right? So using the product rule, we can actually come up with the correct answer, which is 2 to the 6th power. However, what did you observe with the power here and another power? That's right. If we are going to multiply 3 and 2, you will go directly to 6, which is the answer. So you are going to get rid of these steps, na, of these steps and then just multiply the power here of 2 times the outer power, which is 2 as well. So 3 times 2 is 6. So 2 to the 6th power. Okay? That's why it's called the power of a power rule. So algebraically, we can write that as uh, A to the M and then raised to N. And that is equal to A raised to m n where a is not equal to zero so this is our second property the power of a power rule right so we just multiply the uh multiply the powers m and n of course where a is not equal to zero now let's continue our examples for example number two Solve it using the power rule. We have here x to the fourth, x to the fourth, the quantity of x to the fourth to the fourth. So instead of writing x to the fourth times x to the fourth times x to the fourth and so on, let's just multiply the four here and the four in outside, right? So we have four times four, that's equal to x, four times four, 16 and you're done this is how the power of a power rule work do you have any question for this one let's proceed to the third property okay let's proceed to the third property property number three and this is what we call the power of a product rule so the power of a, a product rule this is just the like the combination of the first two properties that we have just discussed the product rule and the power rule. You combine them together, that becomes the power of a product rule for property number three. So let's apply them before we write the algebraic, the general uh, formula for that. Let's just uh, investigate first. Let's investigate first. We have, for example, number one for property number three, say two, the quantity of two xy to the fourth. So the power of the product rule, it just says that we're just going to distribute this four to all the variables and constants in a term, right? So in this case, this is just equal to two to the fourth, x to the fourth, and y to the fourth. Again, just distributed it here. And so two to the fourth, x to the fourth, y to the fourth, and then just simplify after distributing the four, the exponent. So we have two times two times two times two. That is equal to 16, x to the fourth, y to the fourth. All right, 16x to the fourth, y to the fourth. And this is one of the examples of the power of the product rule. So therefore, let's generalize it. Generalize not on. In this case, if we have A, B, the quantity of A, B to the M, that is just equal to A to the M times A to the N, where A is not equal to zero. Let's a box on that so that you would remember that the property number three for loss of exponent is the power of, of a product rule. 
Ayan. The quantity of AB raised to M is just equal to A to the M times A to the N, where A is not equal to zero. So let's continue our example for this property. For number two, we have, huh, in this case, more complicated examples. We have two times the quantity of X plus Y, quantity squared, and then let's enclose that with uh, braces. I uh, know now I mean brackets and then Q. What about that? I want you to pause this video and I want you to solve and think about it. So the first thing that we're going to do here is to distribute the three to two. And of course, we're going to multiply this three to two here. So we have two cube, okay? Two cube times x plus y, okay, two times three, which is two times three, yan. This is equal to two times two, four times two, eight, times the quantity of x plus y to the six. Can you follow, class? Can you follow? So eight times the quantity of x plus y to the six. That is our final answer. Okay, last example, last example. Number three, what if we have negative two x cubed y z squared and then all of them are being raised to Four. Again, the quantity of negative 2x cubed y z squared to the fourth. Go. So we have negative 2. And close that. Raised to 4. And then we have x 3 times 4. We have y to the first power, na, diba? Times 4. And we have z, 2, raised to 2 times 4. Can you follow, class? I have just distributed the 4 to all the constants and base here, numerical coefficient, rather. So negative 2 is being raised to 4. x cubed, gin multiply ko siya sa 4. And then y to the first power times 4 z squared, 2 times 4, that is equal to 8. So after you distributed, you applied the, the power of the power rule, the power of the product rule rather, we are going to simplify. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. We know that it's going to be positive because of the even exponent. So we have 16 x. 3 times 4, 12, y, y, 1 times 4, 4, z, 2 times 4, 8. So our answer or final answer is 16, x to the 12th power, y to the 4th power, z to the 8th power. And that ends our discussion on the first part of the loss of exponent, particularly we tackled about the product rule the power of the power rule, and the power of the product rule. So see you in the next video for part two.